Hello all, today we are going to see about a spectral clustering technique. Spectral clustering technique is also an unsupervised uh, which is uh, used to find the clusters uh, uh, in a graph. So the, this is meant for the data which are represented in the form of a graph. So how do we find the clusters? If you are uh, able to find the mostly connected subgraphs from the given graph, so then we are done with the cluster identification task. So we'll see how the spectral clustering is going to help us to find the mostly connected subgraphs. So why at all we need to cluster uh, graphs? So uh, because we have so many data that are uh, represented normally in the form of a graph. Let's take social networks like Facebook or Twitter. So uh, we're all connected in the form of a graphs. So if we're able to find the clusters in uh, such a network, so then we can locate the uh, similar interest uh, group. So we can also track the inlinks and outlinks of the web pages because web pages uh, itself can be perceived in the form of a graph. So this um, because uh, there are inlinks uh, coming um, uh, towards a web page and outlinks uh, are going up from a web page are uh, going from a web page to another web page, so it can be passed in the uh, in the form of a graph. So in fact, uh, this outlinks and inlinks are uh, two important factors which are. Uh, uh, used for ranking a particular web page so we can also like uh, use these uh, inlinks and outlinks and this graphical representation to cluster the web pages which have similar contents and uh, in natural language processing also so we can uh, um, uh, see uh, text document in the form of a graphs where nodes uh, form the uh, nodes are formed by the uh, words and the semantic connection between the words can form the edges between them so for example, uh, let's say a sentence, uh, the government declared holiday yesterday. So uh, by, uh, to process the uh, inner meaning of the sentence, uh, um, just, be, uh, just by taking the words alone, instead of just by taking the words alone, if you're able to find the semantic connection between the words and uh, we build an application on top of this kind of representation, it becomes uh, more efficient uh, than we uh, consider only the terms. So now, um how do we uh, find the graphs so now uh, how do we find the gra subgraphs which are mostly connected so the idea is simple so um, a subgraph can be um, formed i mean considered as a single cluster when it has maximum number of within cluster connections and minimum number of uh, between cluster connections so we need to find such a subgraph so before that so we need to, uh, so this is the graph, so we need to understand the graph. So this is the graph G, this is an undirected graph which uh, has a set of uh, V nodes and set of uh, E edges. So now this is how we are supposed to form the cluster. So here it is uh, uh, obvious, uh, it is obvious that this uh, node 2, uh, 1 and 3 form one cluster and uh, uh, 5, 4 and 6 form another cluster. So we are partitioning the graph like this. So this is how we are supposed to find, we are supposed to find the clusters. So now we have formed the two clusters. So we'll see how actually we go about this uh, clustering technique. So before that, so we need to keep in mind of uh, certain uh, metrics. So uh, how to form a good uh, cluster out of a graph. So we have a certain metrics. We'll uh, see that before we see the actual spectral clustering technique. So one such metric is graph cuts. A graph cut is nothing but the set of edges with only one node, which tells about the set of edges with only one node in the cluster. So cut of A. So let's say uh, we saw two clusters in the previous uh, graph, uh, A and uh, B. The two, uh, uh, the cut of A is given by the um, summation of the edges, the, which has one node in cluster A and the other node is, does not belong to the cluster A. So the I is the node. I belongs to A cluster, whereas the J does not belong to the A cluster because the Jth node is in the uh, some other cluster. So here it is B. So let's assume that the edge weight is 1. So now the cut of the A is uh, 2 actually. So because there are two edges which has only one node in cluster A and uh, the other node, the uh, the other edge of this, the other node uh, of the edge is in the some other cluster. So we have... Uh, uh, the cut um, of A to be 2. So we need to understand, uh, so by uh, measuring the cuts, we can assess the quality of the uh, cluster. But the problem uh, with the uh, cluster uh, uh, cut metric is that, so it may give you a misleading, uh, um, uh, I mean, interpretation that, 
so it does not because uh, why because it gives only the uh, how well the graph is connected outwards but it does not consider the density of the uh, connections within the cluster so we can uh, able to understand uh, better through this diagram so here uh, the cut score uh, for the this these two clusters is fine uh, so because they are densely populated uh, inside as well and they are uh, um, have a weak connection within uh, uh, i mean between the clusters so this uh, the, uh, this is fine so whereas the cut score also gives uh, misleading interpretation that this is also a good cluster because so this it's not a cluster so but it has an uh, between connections but since the uh, a cut does not consider the within uh, cluster connection so this also uh, becomes a cut score so this uh, gives us a, a misleading interpretation that um, uh, this can also be a good cluster so uh, how do we overcome this so we can go for another metric called uh, conductance rather than uh, cut so now conductance what conductance uh, takes into account is that it also takes into account the connectivity of the group uh, um, within the cluster and also uh, the outside the cluster so to understand the conductance we should also understand the volume so the volume gives the summation of the degree so the total weight of the edges with at least one end point in a cluster so that means a volume of a is nothing but all the summation of the uh, degrees or uh, the summation of all the uh, degrees of each and every node so what is a degree degree is the number of connections a node uh, might have so here here uh, we have an uh, undirected uh, graph so we can uh, calculate the number of edges that is emerging out of each uh, each and every node so that becomes the degree so now how do we calculate uh, conductance is that conductance is nothing but cut of a divided by volume of a so if so cut uh, gives importance to the uh, edges emerging uh, uh, out between the cluster whereas volume uh, uh, gives uh, uh, gives importance to the uh, the degrees uh, that is the number of connections uh, within the cluster so by considering both the factors the conductance gives a balanced view of how good a cluster could be so now to uh, have a uh, to uh, uh, to say a cluster as good so the conductance value should be low so 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 far what we have seen is that uh, um, about uh, a graph clustering so we know that we need to understand uh, we need to find the uh, uh, subgraph which is highly connected within itself and it is weakly connected between the clusters so and we saw about the metrics which can define uh, a, a good graph cluster so now we are actually going into the spectral clustering technique so the three main steps are the pre uh, the pre processing technique is step number 1 in which we actually represent the graph as a matrix representation so we'll see with an example uh, later so the matrix representation we are going to uh, we are interested in forming a laplacian matrix we'll uh, see about that and we decompose the matrix uh, uh, into the uh, eigenvectors so we know what is an eigenvector so eigenvectors are nothing but uh, which uh, helps us to map um, each and every point to a low dimensional representation so that's what uh, an eigenvector does we know that a vector is, is a component which has both magnitude and direction whereas an eigenvector actually maps any object into a low dimensional space by it can shrink or expand a particular object by a scalar value so that scalar value is nothing but the eigen value so now we uh, here for this um, problem so why we have chosen eigen vectors is that we are going to find the eigen vectors of the laplacian matrix so for the, that eigen vectors is going to tell us so it is going to a uh, map in each and every node to a particular value so which actually will give an idea of how the uh, graph is uh, um, uh, can be clustered so that is going to help us to find so where actually the partition uh, comes so that's where uh, we are uh, that's why we are uh, using eigenvectors here and then grouping so group uh, grouping is uh, um, simple because again after finding the eigenvectors of the laplacian matrix so we can uh, group uh, the nodes according to the values of the eigenvector so we'll uh, see the step number one so we have to uh, build the laplacian matrix l of a graph so laplacian matrix to uh, find the laplacian matrix we need to first find the adjacency matrix of a graph so we'll see how to find the adjacency matrix 
the before that we have to understand certain things so adjacency matrix actually tells us how um, well a graph is connected because it gives a um, uh, we'll see uh, with an example but just now uh, uh, as of now we need to understand what is an ad adjacency matrix adjacency matrix gives a value non zero value uh, if the if there is a connection between uh, two nodes otherwise the node value is going to be the matrix value is going to be uh, zero uh, so uh, we need we also need to understand a vector x so because we are going to this vector is nothing but the eigen vector but uh, here we need to understand that the as of now we need to understand this vector to be a vector alone so which has the value so which can be thought of uh, the uh, vector in which each and every component of this vector is going to have some a label or the value of each and every node of the graph okay so the length of this vector is nothing but the number of the nodes that are present in the uh, graph g so now so we know that uh, a is the adjacency matrix a is the adjacency matrix which tells us about how well uh, how well a graph is connected and x is the vector which has the values of each and every uh, node of the graph so when we try to multiply that we get another vector y so now we are going to incorporate this concept to eigen vector concept so this is how uh, uh, this is the uh, idea of eigen vector so given a matrix a when we multiply that by an eigen vector x so we actually transform this um, matrix by a scalar value which is nothing but the eigen value so we again so we again get the uh, we again get the transformed matrix of a uh, which is multiplied by the uh, eigen value um, uh, lambda so that's what uh, that's what we said like uh, eigen vector is nothing but it it has the capacity of transforming any object by the scalar value um, that is nothing but the eigen value so now uh, remember our uh, goal so which is called the spectral uh, clustering spectrum is nothing but the eigen vectors so spectrum is nothing but the eigen vectors of the graph which is going to be um, uh, helpful in finding the partition of the graph that's how uh, we should understand the uh, name of it so now we'll see an example so let's find the adjacency value of uh, adjacency matrix so for the graph g so this is uh, our graph g and this is the adjacency matrix of it so we can see the diagonals filled with the value 0 so if it will uh, um, it will if the one the node 1 and 2 is connected it will have the value 1 if the 1 and 3 is connected value is uh, 1 1 and 4 is not connected so it has the value 0 so 1 and 5 are connected it has the value 1 and 1 and 6 is not connected it has the value zero so that that's how we have uh, formed the adjacency matrix and now we can understand that so from this matrix so we can understand how well the graph is connected with each and every other node so to find the laplacian matrix we also need to understand one more matrix that is degree matrix so degree matrix is nothing but so unlike the uh, adjacency matrix the degree matrix will have the diagonal values filled and the rest of the values are zero so the degree matrix is nothing but um, degree is nothing but the connections of each and every node so um, for the node one how many connections are there one two three so one and well one uh, so here the value three denotes that the one has three connections emerging out of it so likewise two the node two has two connections emerging out of it that is one this connection and this one so one two so there are two connections so, so likewise i fill the rest of the uh, values of uh, degree matrix now it's time to uh, populate the laplacian matrix laplacian matrix is nothing but the degree matrix uh, uh, minus the adjacency matrix so now you can see the uh, laplacian matrix uh, having uh, the diagonal value same as the degree matrix and uh, the other values could be either minus one or zero a minus 1 indicates that the pair of nodes are connected the 0 indicates that that are not connected because we are subtracting from the degree matrix and adjacency matrix the adjacency matrix would have had the value 0 uh, if it, the nodes are not connected so here minus 1 indicates the nodes are connected and the 0 indicates the um, minus 1 indicate I'm sorry a minus 1 indicates that the nodes are connected and 0 indicates the no nodes are not connected 
so now so we have to remember our uh, eigen vector problem so now uh, so we have to calculate the eigen vector for this uh, laplacian uh, matrix so how do we do that uh, we um, so we need to um, understand uh, so uh, you can go back and um, uh, uh, read how to find the eigen value and eigen vector for a given matrix so it is a proven fact that the second smallest eigen value you can have a number of eigen uh, values and uh, uh, corresponding eigen pair um, for a given uh, a matrix so it is a proven fact that the second smallest eigen value lambda 2 um, is the is going to uh, help us to find the um, partition of the graph so uh, why because the first eigen value this first smallest eigen value uh, is uh, normally zero and the second smallest eigen value and the corresponding eigen vector so what that eigen vector is going to do is that it is going to transform each and every uh, node uh, node value uh, in such a way that um, the it is um, it creates it transforms uh, the values in such a way that the it pushes one set of values to one cluster and the the, the other set of the values of the node to the other cluster so we uh, we know that we had a vector x which had the values um, x1 x1 to xn so which is the length of the uh, the length of the vector was uh, the number of the nodes so when we multiplied that with the laplacian matrix we uh, got this eigen vector so this uh, how do we understand that which value belongs to which cluster means the positive values uh, you, when you get a positive values th those belong to the uh, one cluster and the negative values can be grouped to the other cluster that's how it is going to help us in understanding how a partition of a graph could happen so now so this is how uh, your y will uh, look like so your y will look like uh, uh, when you get a plus one if it belongs to the a cluster when you get a minus one so it belongs to the b uh, vector so why we have only one and uh, not the other thing is that because we uh, yeah, assumed that each and every value of x label is going to be a one so that's what we understood so this is the uh, second smallest eigen uh, vector so calculated out of the uh, um, uh, matrix laplace in matrix so these are the node labels and these are the eigen uh, so these are the uh, values of the vectors so we can see that the negative values go to the cluster b and the positive values go to the uh, cluster uh, the positive I'm sorry negative values go to the cluster a and the positive values go to the cluster b so so now what the eigen vectors has done is that it has uh, um, the eigen vectors are um, identified for the given Laplacian matrix and that eigen vector has transformed each and every node value in such a way that the the partition has occurred by converting each and every node value as uh, dividing each and every node value as positive and negative and the positive goes to one set of clusters and the negative uh, goes to the other set of cluster so to understand more about uh, the eigen values and eigen vectors of uh, Laplacian matrix so you can go back and uh, learn the paper uh, read the paper uh, research paper by Andrew NG on uh, spectral uh, clustering so now so now understanding uh, the final steps so pre-processing so the, um, uh, to sum up so in the pre-processing step what did we do we just calculate uh, we, uh, we just uh, represented our matrix uh, um, uh, represented our graph in the form of a matrix and we were uh, interested in um, interested in uh, forming the Laplacian matrix and we decomposed the matrix the decomposition stage uh, was nothing but finding the eigenvectors and eigenvalues for the given Laplacian matrix and uh, the eigenvectors uh, um, eigenvectors were identified for the matrix so that uh, the matrix was linearly transformed and we were interested in particularly about the second smallest eigenvalue and its corresponding eigenvector so depending upon the eigenvector um, components we partition the corresponding nodes of the graph into uh, two cluster so and then uh, that was about the grouping actually so in grouping we used the eigen uh, the components of the eigenvector which is the second smallest eigenvector to partition the graph so that's about the spectral uh, clustering technique thank you